This is a review for the iRobot Roomba i3 and i3 Plus. The i3 Plus comes with a self-empty dustbin and a clean base, while the i3 does not. Otherwise, the two robots are identical. The i3's airflow was measured at 8 CFM. Its suction was measured at 0.07 kPa. Unlike most other robot vacuums on the market, the i3 has two brush rolls instead of one. This gives the i3 an extra brush roll for surface agitation at the cost of increased surface area over the brush roll compartment, which appears to reduce the effect of airflow and suction over this area, according to our testing. Largely because of its two brush rolls, and despite its low airflow and suction, the i3 performed very well in our carpet stress test. The i3 picked up all debris types very well in this test. As is the case for all of the other robot vacuums we tested, it also utilizes its side brush and repeated movement over the same areas to get a proper cleaning in this test over time. Note that it repeats movement over the same areas as part of its normal cleaning pattern, but in this particular test, it also activated a special mode called Dirt Detect Mode, which causes it to repeat even more movement over areas where it senses an especially high concentration of debris. In our Carpet Deep Clean test, the i3 picked up 6 grams of debris after 3 passes over an area of carpet embedded with 30 grams of fine debris. In our hard floor stress test, the i3 once again picked up all debris types very well. Again, notice how it uses its side brush and especially repeated movement over the same areas to get a proper cleaning of most of this test area over time. This test does demonstrate that the i3 did have some trouble cleaning edges. The i3 uses a gyroscope and an optical sensor on the bottom of the robot for its navigation, which allows it to move in a very precise row-by-row -row pattern as it cleans a room, and also allows it to approach the full length of each edge of a room head-on as it cleans. This head-on movement is often very good for cleaning edges, as many robot vacuums, as part of this head-on movement, make a tight turn close to the edge, which gets their side brushes close to the edge and really helps fling debris out of this area as they turn. The i3 also does a head-on movement, but it tends to bounce away a little bit before it turns, and so it doesn't really get into the edge to clean it quite the same way as many other robots do with their head-on movements. Instead, the i3 primarily cleans edges by moving parallel to and close to them as part of its regular cleaning cycle. The problem is that it's not particularly effective cleaning edges using this movement either, and so its overall edge performance is not very good. The i3 also did not perform well in our robot vacuum crevice test. Even after extensive runtime, it still could not pull most of the debris out of the crevice used for this test. In our human hair pickup test, the i3 picked up all the hair, but most of that hair wasn't pulled into its dustbin. 50 to 70% of the hair it picked up tangled around its brush rolls and had to be cleaned off manually, though it was extremely easy to pull the hair off the brush rolls because of their bristleless design. The i3 picked up and collected most of the shorter pet hair used for our pet hair pickup test, though a few tufts of hair were stuck on the bottom of the vacuum when we picked it up after the test for inspection. This was a common issue for many of the Roombas we tested. They were really the only robot vacuums we tested that had any trouble at all in this test. It's unclear if it's low airflow and suction, their dual brush roll design, or simply a clearance issue that caused them to not perform as well in this test. We tested the i3's cleaning efficiency and coverage in two different environments, an empty room and a cluttered room. In our empty room testing, we see the i3's row-by-row -row cleaning pattern demonstrated very well. Note how the i3 covers each part of the room twice, once in vertical rows and once in horizontal rows. This crisscross pattern not only ensures a certain level of redundancy on a single cleaning cycle, but it also allows the robot to approach debris in the room from at least two different angles. So stubborn debris that may not get picked up from one angle has a chance of getting picked up from a second angle on a second pass. Lastly, note how the robot gets terrific even coverage throughout most of the room, but fails to clean the area immediately surrounding the clean base. In our cluttered room testing, we again see the same row-by-row -row cleaning pattern in the few small open areas of the room. But more importantly, we see how well the i3 navigates around different types of obstacles and as you can see, it navigates around all of the obstacles in the room quite well. A special note is how well it navigates around chair legs. Certain other gyroscope robots we've tested tend to maintain their row-by-row up-and-down or left-to-right cleaning pattern 
as they navigate around these obstacles. This is not the case with the i3. It tends to switch from an up-down or left-right movement to a circular movement around these obstacles, which is not only a more efficient movement pattern in these areas, but also makes for better coverage in these areas. On the negative side of things, the i3 Plus we used for this testing once again didn't get proper coverage in the area immediately surrounding its clean base in this test. Other important specifications and test results we considered for this review are summarized here. Note especially that this is not a full-fledged mapping robot. It does generate a very basic map of the area it's cleaning, which you can look at on the iRobot Companion app, but you can't really interact with the map. You can't label rooms on the map or set the robot to clean certain areas or stay out of certain areas of the map. You can set physical boundaries using iRobot virtual barriers, which you can buy separately for use with the i3. In the same chart, also note the i3's runtime, bin volume, and noise output, and how those specifications and test results compare to the average for all of the robot vacuums we've tested so far. Lastly, note the robot's diameter and height. These dimensions make the i3 an average size robot vacuum. Moving on to what we like and dislike about this vacuum, first let's talk about what we like. The i3 picks up most types of debris very well on both carpets and hard floors. It picks up and is actually able to pull longer hair all the way through into its dustbin better than most of the robot vacuums we tested. Because of their bristleless design, the i3's brush holes don't tangle as easily with longer hair, and the hair that does tangle is easy to remove. Outside of the area immediately surrounding the i3 Plus's clean base, this robot also gets excellent coverage. And it cleans around and underneath chairs better than many other gyroscope robot vacuums we've tested. Moving on to what we dislike about the i3, it doesn't clean edges as well, and it doesn't pick up shorter pet hair as well as most competitors. It also has lower runtime than most competitors. It is able to recharge and resume cleaning where it left off, but in a large home, it may take a very long time for it to get one complete cleaning cycle with several recharges included. This robot is also considerably louder than most other robot vacuums we tested, and it only runs on one suction setting, its default suction setting. There's no lower suction setting that you can set it to for it to run more quietly. The last negative is that it's usually quite a bit more expensive than most competitors. And this leads us right into our general recommendations. The i3 is usually a very expensive gyroscope robot vacuum. And the i3 Plus is even more expensive, usually by at least $150 or so. The obvious question then is, are either one of these robots worth their purchase price? Let's address the i3 first. The i3 does not self-empty, but it's still considerably more expensive than most other gyroscope robot vacuums on the market. One thing the i3 does do better than those other robot vacuums is that it is able to pick up longer hair and actually collect longer hair in its dustbin better. It's also much easier to detangle its brush roll, and it's probably going to navigate more efficiently under chairs. On the negative side, it doesn't pick up tufts of shorter hair as well, it has low runtime on a single charge, and it's louder. Taking all of this into account, the i3 is generally not recommended. What it does well is not worth its extra cost, in our opinion. Not to mention the fact that it still has considerable downsides, which are unacceptable at its price point. We also generally don't recommend the i3 Plus. Yes, it does add self-emptying, which is a great feature to have, but we just don't think the i3 Plus is worth its price, even with this feature included. It's just too expensive considering the limitations of the robot itself. If you have a bigger budget that can accommodate the cost of a self-emptying robot, we recommend spending a bit more to get a better self-emptying robot. If your budget is limited, we recommend forgoing the self-emptying feature altogether. Just get a good robot vacuum without the requirement that it self-empties. See the description of this video for a link to the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we do recommend and thank you for watching.